back to my film and TV channel. I hope you're all staying safe and well. We're going over to Amazon Prime today for a film that's just recently been released. I'm recording this on the 15th of July 2023, so all the scores, etc., as at that date. So we'll have a look at what other people are thinking, what the critics are thinking, and yes, yeah, a bit of a difference between the critics and the public, I think, on this one. And I'm I'm on the side of the public, I think, with this. We're going to have a look at something called Prisoner's Daughter. Please, if you're new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications, everything film and TV, of course, information, reviews like this, some drama series as well. But this is obviously a film today we're looking at, so please, if you do like Prisoner's Daughters, give us a give us a like. And if you don't like Prisoner's Daughters, still give us a like or give us a like for my feeble efforts to uh, give you the information and gen on the film. Right, a 15 certificate, yeah, probably par for the course, uh, I don't always say that. 100 mi minutes, which was okay for me, yeah, uh, all right. Yeah, he didn't outstage welcome too much, you know me on time of films. It was written by Mark Batchett and directed by Catherine Hardwick. Yeah, Kate Beckinsale's in this, wonderful. Uh, Brian Cox, Christopher Combery, John Huertas, Ernie Hudson and Tyson Ritter. So two or three familiar faces, a couple not so familiar. Acting, fine. Yeah, a couple, a couple of dodgy ones. The young lad was uh, was fine acting. You know me and young actors, I don't usually get on too well with that, but uh, he did okay. And it's about uh, an imprisoned man who's allowed out on licence and he has to wear a tag as he attempts to reconnect with his daughter and grandson after being diagnosed with terminal pancreatic cancer. Yeah, he's not got long to live. So it's a simple story, simple plot. Uh, no bells and whistles with this one. What are people thinking? Well, the Rotten Tomatoes audience, 88% positivity. So I don't know how many. Well, that's, that's pretty good. Internet Movie Database, 525 scores and reviews left. And it's getting 6.3 out of 10. So... A healthy figure, nothing wrong with that, but it all begins to fall apart a little bit when we look at the critics. Rotten Tomatoes, only a 48% positivity, so 4.8 out of 10 basically, based on 44 critics. It does get an average rating overall when they take take out some of the things that get 5.6 out of 10. So 48% positivity, 5.6 out of 10 doesn't quite equate, but hey, that's uh, that's their maths, not mine. 21 fresh and 23 rotten. So just just in the rotten, but not, not far off. The consensus, Prisoner's Daughter is an outstanding cast, but they're overwhelmed by a blandly busy story that offers few surprises. Yeah, as I said, it's by the numbers, but so what? Uh, a lot of stuff is this these days and to be honest with you I get a bit fed up of flashbacks and stories all over the place and try to concentrate too much so it's nice to get a good old fashioned A to Z A to Z because I'm British film to watch uh, Tim Roby from the Daily Telegraph he said if there's one reason to see Prisoner's Daughter it's Kate Beckinsale <laughs> <laughs> Who am I to disagree? And Brian Cox as well is okay in this. I like Brian Cox. Kevin Mayer from The Times says, And yet, before that absurd climax, Cox and Beckinsale prove a knockout pairing. Credible and sweetly em empathetic as family protagonists, yearning for clothes yet bedeviled by, bedeviled by the past. Uh, uh, absurd climax. I thought the climax was quite clever. I like the climax. So I have a watch, guys. I thought it was okay. Uh, yeah, it was unexpected uh, and it was fine for me. It wasn't what I was expected at all when I saw that review from uh, there. But yeah, quite. I agree with the uh, knockout pair. I think they worked very well together. I think the chemistry worked. Most of the actors in this one. Uh, rubbing off each other or getting on with each other. Peter Bradshaw from The Guardian said, here's a terrible TV movie style piece of work with some awful acting and deeply questionable crass finale. Another one who did like the ending. It's all more wince inducing given the lineup of alpha talent behind it. Again, as I said, nothing wrong with that finale, mate. I don't know where, where you get that from. And I thought the acting, all right, there's a couple that aren't great, but generally uh, a good acting lineup. Rex Reed from The Observer said, Surprisingly, the overstuff yet bland screenplay by Mark Batchy offers no wit or nuance to relieve the tedium, but stocks a melodrama with cliches from other movies and easy solutions to the dilemma. Yes, well, again, it's it, it's, it's easy. Uh, ultimately poignant watch, of course. Uh, an ending that dares for me to be a little bit different, so I, I'm going to give it credit for that. I don't agree at all with what Rex or a couple of those other critics are saying on that one. Go to Metacritic, yeah, again, not great. 48% positivity. 
based on 14 reviews, four positive, that's okay, seven mixed, okay, and three negative. So at least, at least it's more positive than negative. And it scored anywhere between 20 and 85 out of 100. One of the lower ones was CNN's Brian Lowry, only give it 35. He said, for Cox, a veteran actor with no mounties left to climb and few concerns about speaking his mind, Prisoner's Daughter plays like one of those movies where you just take the money and run. Well, well, Brian, I think Bruce Willis, Nicholas Cage, some of their recent efforts have been taking the money and running. I think this is a bit unfair to put that into that cat, put this into that category, in fairness, or for that for that matter, Mr. Cox into that category. Very unfair. Chicago sometimes is Richard Rupert, though he liked it. He was seventy-five out of hundred. He said Catherine Hardwick, sharply drawn, slow simmer domestic drama, prison do prisoner's daughter, has a cool vibe of an indie film from a generation ago. Absolutely, from the lived-in look of the Vegas sets to the authentic performances of the terrific cast. So, yeah, a bit of a throwback, but why not? Nothing wrong with that. As I said, no bells and whistles with this one. It did feel like a film out of its time, but hey, so what? It's, it's good. I liked it. So there you go. I think the Christie's have been generally over harsh. I think the audience seem to like it, which mostly, mostly like it anyway. So that's fine and that's good enough for me. Uh, as I said, by the numbers, family drama, that's not as bad as the critics make out with, with uh, a surprising end that uh, that sort of did not, not shock me, but uh, yeah, came, came, I didn't expect it, put it that way. So as I say, I wasn't, I wasn't, some critics are down on the finale. I thought it, it did it very, very well. So my little scores, fresh on Metacritic, uh, sorry, fresh on Rotten Tomatoes even, positive on Metacritic, and 6.5 out of 10 for Internet Movie Database. Six points, so that's my score. Let me know what you think, guys. I said, have I been a bit over the top with this, or am I, am I right to be a bit critical of the critics? Makes a nice change, doesn't it? I like that. Anyway, let us know what you think, guys. Until we meet again, that's one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, everyone. Bye for now.